Hey, STEP 2023 Math C students. Um, welcome to the Class A recording. My name is James Parmenter. I'll be your instructor. You can call me James, you can call me Mr. Parmenter or something else that's convenient. Um, we're just gonna get right into it. Uh, hopefully you have a chance to watch this video before we meet on Monday. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's get going today. So Class A, we're gonna be talking about plotting points and um, graphing lines by finding the X and Y intercepts. So let's briefly jump into plotting points. Let me share my screen here. All right. You can see that and see my face as well. Not that my face is all that important. So class A notes, plotting points. So let's give ourselves a few points to plot. For example, let's say we've got the following. Um, the point A, which is 0, 4. The point B, which is two, negative three, the point C, which is negative five comma zero, the point D, which is five comma one, the point E, which is negative three, negative four, and the point, which I'm not gonna give a name, just to kind of point out what you do when you don't have that four, two. So each of these points I'm gonna put on this X, Y coordinate system. I'll point out when we're going to the right over here, right, this side over here, this is when X is positive. This side over here, this is when X is negative. Similarly, if you're above the X axis, this is when Y is positive. Below the X axis, this is when Y is negative. We haven't marked any of these grid marks, but usually the assumption that we kind of make is that each one represents a length of one, unless you want to have it be something else. So you can mark this like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, et cetera or whatever is convenient, like if you're plotting way bigger numbers. I'm not gonna mark it generally, although you could mark it like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera. But I don't think you really need to do that. Um, I am gonna do it here just to kind of point out it's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. And then finally, I'll do it for the y's as well. Again, you really don't need to do this I'm just pointing out right's positive, up's positive, left's negative, down's negative. So if I want to plot, plot the point zero comma four, it's always important to remember that when you write points, they're written as the x coordinate first, the y coordinate second. Um, they're alphabetical. Right, x comes before y. So when I plot the point zero comma four, I'm gonna go zero in the x direction, which means I don't move left or right. I'm gonna go four in the y direction. So I'm gonna be right here, which kind of covers up that four. And I'm gonna label it, hey, you don't generally have to label things, but I'm kind of trying to be specific here. The point B, I'm gonna go two in the x direction. So two to the right, negative three in the y direction. So three down. So two right, three down, I end up there at the point B. Okay, for the point negative five, zero, I'm gonna go five to the left, zero in the up or down direction. So I'm gonna right there. That's the point comma C. Um, I wanna point out, just so you recognize, um, the point A is zero comma four, and it ends up on the Y axis. The point C is negative five comma zero, and it ends up on the X axis. So when you have an X coordinate of zero, your point's always gonna be on the Y axis. You have a y coordinate of zero, your point's always going to be on the x-axis. Well, let's continue on here. We've got the point D, which is five comma one. So I'm going to go five to the right, one up. For the point E, I'm going to go negative three, negative four. So that's going to be three left and four down. Negative three, negative four. And then for the last point, four comma two, I could call it F if I wanted to, or I could just find it four right, two up. And then I could literally label it with the point four comma two. You will see that happen frequently as well. And there's not a whole lot more to plotting points. You're really just going some amount left or right, some amount up or down. Okay, let's move on to the other part of this, which is going to be um, graphing lines by finding intercepts. So let's look at some examples. Let's say we have, let me put this out of the way here. Sure, out of the way. Let's say we want to graph the following line. So we're going to first, we want to graph line y equal to x minus four. And the first step is gonna be find the intercepts. And this is where I, what I was just saying actually becomes really important. So if I want to find 
the y-intercept line, well, the y-intercept has to live on the y-axis, which means I haven't gone left or right. So the x value has to be zero. So to find the y-intercept, we're always going to start by setting x equal to zero. This is true actually, regardless if you're graphing a line or any other kind of function, we always find the y-intercept by setting y equal to zero. So if I set x equal to zero, I'm gonna get y equal to zero minus four, which is just equal to negative four. So the y-intercept, is going to be the point 0, comma, negative 4. Easy enough, down 4. The x-intercept, well, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. To find the x-intercept, the x-intercept has to be on the x-axis where y is equal to 0. So I'm going to set y equal to 0. And then I'm going to get 0 equal to x minus 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get 4 equal to x. So my x-intercept is going to be the point 4, comma, 0. And then depending on how good you are at drawing straight lines, you can use a ruler or just draw it freehand. I like to use a ruler because I'm not very good at drawing straight lines. I'm going to line that up to draw the line. Um, and the only thing, other thing I'll say about this line is we do want to put arrows at the end of it like that to indicate that it keeps going on and on and on forever and ever. Let's look at another example. Um, so I don't always use graph paper. I don't typically use graph paper when I'm graphing the line, but sometimes I do just to make it look nicer. But let's look at another. Another few examples, I'm gonna use not graph paper, this next one. So let's say I wanna graph the line, y equal to two x minus, sorry, plus six. I suppose I could number my examples here, a good idea. This was the first, I mean, I guess this was the first one really, okay, fine. This was, uh, I don't know, this, this is the first one. I don't care about that one. Here's the second one. So. I want to graph line y plus two x plus six. I'm going to do the same thing every time. This is actually kind of standard operating procedure for graphing a line. Find the y-intercept, find the x-intercept, draw the line that goes between them. That's all you really need. So y-intercept, well, if I set x equal to zero, I'm going to get y equal to two times zero plus six, which is equal to six. My y-intercept is the point zero comma six. X-intercept, I'm going to set y equal to zero. I'm going to get 0 equal to 2x plus 6. When lines are written in this format, which is the y equals mx plus b format, that's what we usually call this, or the slope intercept format, um, it's usually really easy to find the y-intercept, right? You just plug in 0 for x and you get this number over here. Usually the x-intercept is a little more work to find. So I'm going to have to subtract 6 from both sides, negative 6 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, Negative six divided by two equals two x divided by two. So you end up getting negative three is equal to x. So my x-intercept is the point negative three comma zero. We do like to say negative three comma zero, not just negative three, um, although people will just say negative three sometimes. So then if I was going to graph this, here's what I would do. If I didn't have a grid, I would just draw a grid or a, a coordinate axis system. I probably wouldn't label it, although you can label x and y. Um, usually we put the x's and y's on the sides where they're positive. So we usually label the right side of the x-axis and the, the top side of the y-axis. And then I want the point 0, 6 for y and negative 3, 0 for x. I don't like to draw them first because I'm a bad shot, like if I'm freehanding it. But if um, I guess if I draw them first like this and like this, I'm just kind of estimating. I'm going to say that's 0, 6. That's negative 3, 0. And then I'm going to draw the line between them. And I guess I'm going to use my ruler since I have it. I'll show you how I do it without a ruler in just a second. Great, there's my line. This is really the same process every time for finding the graph of a line. Find the y-intercept, find the x-intercept, draw the line that connects, that goes through them, I should say, that connects them and goes through them. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. Um, I still wanna do one, yeah, one more for you. So let's say I wanna graph the line. Oh, this is number three. So I wanna graph, y equal to, what do we got here? Negative 3x plus 4. So same process every time. I'm going to find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. And I'm going to get y equal to that value there. Whenever it's written like this, that value there is just your y-intercept. It's not the only way of writing the equation of the line, though. So we'll talk about how you can find the y-intercept when it's written differently. So here we're going to get y equal to negative 3 times 0 plus 4, which is 0 plus 4, which is 4. And you can see a lot of top of my head here. Um, x-intercept is usually going to be more work. 
we're going to set y equal to zero. So we're going to get zero equal to negative three x plus four. You can bring either the, either thing to the left hand side. I like to keep things positive if I can. So I would probably prefer to go positive three x equal to four. Although some people would say negative four equal to negative three x. Either way, when we solve for x here, dividing by three, you get x equal to four thirds. Or over here, dividing by negative three. you still get both of these giving you x equal to positive 4 thirds. So now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw my coordinate axis system. And I'm just gonna look at where my x and y intercept should land. So my y intercept should be positive four, so up here somewhere. My x intercept should be positive 4 thirds to the right. And definitely four is bigger than 4 thirds, right? 4 thirds is one and a third, so like 1.3-ish. That's 1.3, 3, forever. Um, four is like three times as big as that. So I'm gonna try and think, well, why should we maybe way up here and next be over here? And then I'm just gonna draw the line first. Pretending like I don't have a ruler. And then I'm just, and then I'm just gonna label it, even if it's not the scale, that's okay if we're not working with the grid to start off with. That's why I also don't like to like number it with those little like hash marks here. I'm just saying that is the point zero comma four. That is the point neg uh, positive four thirds comma zero. And then I've got everything I need. All right, let's do a couple more of these types and we'll talk about the other type of way of writing the equation of the line. Um, sometimes things aren't always this nice. Sometimes you have fractional slopes. Oh, I also want to say one more thing just about these last three examples here. Um, this first example, the coefficient of X was one, which is the slope. And the slope is certainly positive. We'll talk more about slope in the next class. Here, the coefficient of x is two. The slope is two, still a positive slope. Here, the coefficient of x was negative three, and the slope was negative three, which means you're going down from left to right. So when you have a positive slope, you go up from left to right. When you have a negative slope, you go down from left to right. Um, let's look at a couple more examples. So we've got y equal to negative one third x plus two. So a couple things to observe here. One, we know the slope is negative one third, so we're expecting the graph to go down from left to right. Let's find the intercepts. So y-intercept, I could probably just get away with saying y equals two, but let's go ahead and do the process. X equals zero gives us y equals negative one third times zero plus two, which is two. You don't have to show all this work to find the x-intercept. It's just good to do it in the beginning if you're not sure what's happening. X-intercept, we do need to show the work because it's a little more work. So I'm going to set Y equal to zero, which is going to give me zero equal to negative one third X plus two. I personally would add one third X to both sides. So plus one third X plus one third X. Those are going to cancel over here. I have one third X equal to two. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So that three times one third X equals three times two. Three times one third is one. So x equals six, right? The one, one times x is x. So my x-intercept is gonna be six comma zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. I could pretend like I could draw that line well, but let's just be careful here and draw it using, so I mean, there's nothing wrong with using a ruler. Cool, looks good. Um, I don't think I need to label, like you totally could label these, but I also feel like I've both written them up here. And if you count, it's obvious that we're getting that point, but you can also label them if you want to. And I am kind of a fan of labeling them. Let's do one more. Oh, and also look, it goes down from left to right like we expected. Let's do one more, um, let's do a more fractional one. And then we'll talk about some other examples. So let's say I have the, I want to graph the line y equal to three fifths x Minus, I was going to do three, but let's do minus four. Yeah, minus four should be fine. Okay, three fifths x. I forgot the x. Sorry about that. Three fifths x minus four. Mm, I feel like, well, well, we'll see what happens here. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, yeah, that's not, not bad. So let's see. So I'm going to do my y intercept first. So x equals zero, y equals zero minus four. Right, I know that three fifths times zero or anything times zero is gonna be zero. So I get zero, negative four, great. X intercept, as usual, a little more work. I'm gonna set Y equal to zero. I'm gonna get zero equal to three fifths X minus four. 
I would add the four to the left because I like to keep things positive when I can, both in math and in life. And then I'm gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fraction, which is five thirds. So I'm gonna have five thirds times four is equal to five thirds times three fifths, X. Five times three is 15, three times five is 15, 15 over 15 is one. Or you can think of the five, the five is canceling. So this all just is gonna be one. Five thirds times four is really five thirds times four over one. And when you multiply fractions, you do top times top, bottom times bottom. So five times four is 20, three times one is three. So X is gonna equal 20 thirds. And 20 thirds is a little bit more than six, I think. I mean, right, 20 thirds is six and two thirds. So I know I'm gonna go six and a little more. Now here's what I would really do. I'm actually not gonna plot this point yet. If I want my graph to be like super, super exact, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna find another point that's more convenient. So I know I've got y equal to zero, negative four. And I know that x is gonna be 20 thirds, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, and like two more thirds. So it's about right there. What I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna say, well, an easier value to plug in for x would have been five. I plug in x equal to five, just on the side here, x equal to five is gonna give me y equal to three fifths times five minus four. Three fifths times five or three fifths of five is just three. So that's gonna equal three minus four, which is negative one. So I'm getting kind of like an extra point, five comma negative one, which is easier for me to plot. One, two, three, four, five, negative one right there. Which means that I really kind of, should maybe didn't want to plot that point yet, but oh well, I did. So now I'm going to try and graph that. There we go. Got my intercepts, zero, negative four, and 20 thirds comma zero. And you can also label that point if you want to, but you don't need to. You only ever need the two intercepts. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have a third point easier. What I probably would have actually done if I was graphing this is I would have plotted this point and this point, drawn the line through them, and then labeled this point as 20 thirds comma zero. Okay, a few more lines that look a little different. So this format, y equals mx plus b, called the slope intercept form, because you can easily see the slope and the intercept form, um, is what we often go to. But there's another form called the general form, where the lines are written like, Something like 3x plus 2y equals 12. One option would be to solve for y, but it's absolutely unnecessary to do so if I'm not being asked to do that. If I'm just being asked to graph this, I'm still going to fall back on my usual method, which is to first find the intercepts, so find the y-intercept. Now it is going to be a bit more work to find the y-intercept. You're going to get, you're going to set x equal to zero. And you're going to get 3 times 0 plus 2 times y equal to 12. 3 times 0 is 0. So 2y equals 12 divided by side by 2. And 2y divided by 2 equals 12 divided by 2. So you get y equal to 6. So my y-intercept is 0 comma 6. My x-intercept, same idea. I'm going to set y equal to 0. And I'm going to get 3x plus 2 times 0 equal to 12. So I'm going to get 3x equal to 12, divide both sides by 3, and you have 3x divided by 3 equal to 12 divided by 3, so x is equal to 4. So my x-intercept is 4 comma 0. All right, so plotting those points, 4 comma 0 for x, 0 comma 6 for y, 2, 4, 6. And then I'm just going to freehand, I'm going to take my chances here. It's not going to look as good as the ruler, but oh well. Sometimes you don't always have a ruler. That's still pretty good. I did all right. So there's four comma zero, zero comma six. Something worth observing here. When a line is written like this in the general form, the coefficient of X is not the slope, right? If the slope was three, this graph would be going up from left to right. But the slope here is definitely negative because the graph is going down from left to right. So definitely not the slope. I will, I will point out, if you've heard of slope before, you know it's kind of like the rise over the run from here to here, the rise is, well, I've risen negative six, right? I've gone down six and the run is over four. So you can think of the slope as being negative six divided by four. But again, we'll get into that more in the next class. Two more examples and then we're gonna call it a day. Um, let's do, yeah, let's do one more we're not. Um, let's, I'm gonna do one without the graph paper again. So let's try graphing the following. Let's graph 
four X minus three Y equal to six. Same deal. We're first going to set Y equal to zero, so X equal to zero, where I usually like to start to find the Y intercept. So I'm gonna get four times zero minus three times Y equal to six. So negative three Y equals six. So y equals six divided by negative three and six divided by negative three is negative two. So my y-intercept is zero, negative two. Same deal for the x-intercept, except now we're setting y equal to zero. And when we do that, sorry, I'm underlining things all willy-nilly. Oh, and I forgot to, let, see, this is the problem. I forgot to start labeling things way back when. And so I had problem two, I had problem three, just so you can follow these in the notes if you want to. This one was number four. Five, six. Now we're at middle number seven. And we'll have one more, my favorite number eight. Um, so set y equal to zero. I'm gonna have four times x minus three times zero equal to six. So four x equals six. Divide both sides by six. X is gonna equal six fourths. We should reduce that fraction because six and four both have a factor of two. So you can either think of this as two times three over two times two, and then two divided by two is one, and that gives you three halves, or you can factor this in some other way. I prefer fractions. If you like, you can also write this as a decimal, which is 1.5. Um, so I'm gonna say that my x-intercept is three halves comma zero. All right, now I'm gonna try and graph it. I'm not gonna try it, yeah, I'm going to graph it. So let's see, y is negative two, and x is positive 1.5 or positive 3 halves. So they're pretty close to like being the same distance from the origin. Y is going to be a little further down the next. So I'm just going to kind of shoot for like here to there. So I'm just going to draw it. Oops. Okay. I didn't quite hit the points I was going for, but I'm, that's why I didn't label them already. That's why I didn't mark out the points first. I'm just trying to be like safe. So there's my 0, negative 2. And there's my 3 halves, comma 0. This might not look quite to scale. That's okay. As long as you've labeled them appropriately and the line looks semi-correct, we're good to go. One more example. So in the, I think this one, the number is a little bit gross here. So my last example here is example eight. By the way, eight's my favorite number because I was born on August 8th. In fact, my birthday is Tuesday after class starts. Um, anyway, not a big deal. So let's try graphing negative 2x plus 5y equal to 8. That's going to be kind of gross. So y-intercept, so x equal to 0. We're going to get negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times y equals 8. That's just going to be 0. So you get 5y equal to 8. Divide both sides by 5, you get y equal to 8 fifths. And this one you can also write as a decimal because it terminates. So you could write 8 fifths. Or if you prefer, you can write y equal to 1.6 or one and three fifths. Although, um, so I will point out, we typically kind of don't like mixed fractions like this because it kind of can be seen as multiplication sometimes. So if you really, really, really want to write something like this, don't write it like that. Write it as one plus three fifths, which is less satisfying, but it is more correct. Um, but really you should either write it as an improper fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator or as a decimal if it's what you prefer. Okay, so my y-intercept is 0, 8 fifths. And then my x-intercept, let's see here. I'm going to set y equal to 0. I'm going to get negative 2x plus 5 times 0 equal to 8. So x is going to equal 8 divided by negative 2, which is negative 4. So my x-intercept is negative 4, 0. So x-intercept is 4 to the left. Y-intercept is a little bit more than 1 and a half. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I kind of want to say one more thing. So again, if you're on this kind of grid situation, you want things to look really, really nice, I might pick another value for x so that when I add that over there, I get a multiple of five. So just as a quick aside here, if you pick x equal to one, you get negative two. See, here's what I should have done before I plotted that point below. You get negative two plus 5y equal to 8, negative 2 plus 8 is, oh, sorry, positive 2 plus 8 is 10, so you get y equal to 2. So you can also say that point there is also a nice grid point that is easy to plot. So 
Now, see, these aren't quite in line, which is okay. There's my one. Um, the biggest takeaway I would say from class today is one, making sure you know how to plot points. You know, positive x goes to the right, negative x goes to the left. Positive y values go up, negative y values go down. And then super duper important to know that to find the y-intercept on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is always zero. I should label these, right? And this one is zero comma eight fifths. If you've gone only up or down, you haven't moved left or right, so the x value hasn't moved from zero. Similarly, the x-intercept, which in this case is negative four zero, the x-intercept will always have a y value of zero because you're on the x-axis, the point isn't above or below, so the y value can't be positive or negative. All right, that is all. I look forward to meeting all of you on Monday. Take care.